for educational purposes only. Any electrical work must be done by a qualified electrician. Please check out the links in the description of this video for our recommended products. Thank you. Hi, my name is Steve Cavallaris and welcome to this episode. Uh, Today we're going to be installing a circuit breaker panel. So I'm going to be demonstrating how that's installed. And we also call this a load center as well. And this one here is actually made by a company called Leviton. So uh, let's get ready to install this and I'm going to show you how I do it Steve's way. First thing we're going to do is we're going to um, mount our screw and the screws that I like to use are these here. These are called the lath screws and we can see that gives us a nice amount of area where it's going to firmly hold the circuit breaker panel in place. For this one, I'm going to measure six inches from the ceiling. But, you know, when you're doing your own installation, you know, you have to decide what the right height that you need to be. Uh, again, we want to be on the stud. Make sure that your screw is on the stud as much as possible. And here I'm just going to measure six inches. Now I'm going to hang the circuit breaker panel and this is a heavy one. Um, all right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our level and we're going to make sure that our circuit breaker panel is nice and level. And I think we're pretty good over there. Okay, we look just right. I'm going to add a few more screws, you know, just to be sure that it's in there nice and tight. I'm going to put a couple of more screws up on top and uh, a couple of screws on the bottom. Now, we have to be careful because we've got some holes here uh, and those holes are for our ground bars. We're going to be installing one, two, and then the third one down there. So I don't want to use any of those holes. So I'm going to use these holes over here and get that screwed in. And what I like to do, you know, my way, um, I like to put a piece of plywood behind the load center to make sure that everything's secured just right. And now I'm going to put two more screws down here. Okay, so now our circuit breaker panel is installed very securely. This is not going to go anywhere for a very long time. And again, I, I, I like to um, put a piece of plywood behind here and mount that to the plywood. Um, you know, I've seen other people just take a couple of pieces of wood, but I think the, the plywood is the best mes method for a surface mounted circuit breaker panel. So now, okay, so now that we've, we've hung the, uh, the circuit breaker panel, what we're going to do now is take a look at the guts. So if we look over here, we can see that we have the terminals over here. And that's where we're going to land our branch circuits. The branch circuits are not 
going to land on the circuit breaker. And this is the Leviton circuit breaker, which I'll show you close up in a few seconds. So what happens is, once we land our terminals here uh, from our branch circuits, then when we pop in the circuit breaker, it's actually going to connect our grounded uh, bus bar, and it's going to now connect our hot bus bar. And here's a close-up of the Leviton circuit breaker. So we can see here, you know, it's got a on and off button. And then if we look at the back, this is where it's very different from the other circuit breakers. And all we have to do is once we run our branch circuits into the circuit breaker panel, then we can come later, you know, after uh, we're ready to start powering up the house. Take the circuit breaker, slide it in, pop it in, turn on the power, and you're done. Next step is we're going to now install a couple of additional ground bars, which I like to do. And again, you don't have to do it that way, but I like to do it. I like my circuit breaker panels to be extremely neat, and I'll show you how that helps uh, to keep that process neat. For this demonstration, we are not going to energize the panel, so this way it's nice and safe for us to do this demonstration. Also, later in the video, I'm going to install a couple of ground bars, and I'm going to do a continuity test. And I thought it would be a good idea to do a close-up on the multimeter that I have here. I have it set at 2000 ohms, and there's a little symbol on there, a little speaker symbol, and we're going to hear a little tone which tells us that we have continuity. And here we go, we'll do a zoom in on that. And again, it's set at uh, 2000 ohms, and there's a little speaker symbol over here. And what's gonna happen when we take our leads and we touch them together, we're gonna come down to zero. And if I come in close here, you can hear that tone. Okay, now, we have an open circuit, and now we have continuity, we have a closed circuit. Okay, so right now we're going to be installing some additional ground bars. And also it's, it's important, and in the National Electrical Code, it tells us about you know, this thing here. This is a torquing screwdriver. And if you happen to look at any of the instructions that, that you open up the package and you, you throw that piece of paper away, um, it's, it's going to tell you, you know, what size screw and, you know, where you need to set your torquing screwdriver to. All right, so I'm going to install three of these. I'm going to install one ground bar up here. I'm going to install one over here. And then I'm going to install one down here. All right, so let's do the easy one first. So I have my, uh, my torquing screwdriver set to the manufacturer's uh, instructions that came on this. We'll get this in here. And again, it's really important that you put some pressure on it because as you're putting this in, you're actually threading the, the hole inside the metal casing of the circuit breaker panel. So I'm not going to tighten that all the way. Right now I'm just going to get this in place. And you're going to start hearing a click pretty soon. See that click? That means that I've reached a proper amount of torque. So there's no reason for me to make it any tighter than that. And there we go. It's a great tool and it's actually um, required, you know, by the National Electrical Code uh, that you have a, a proper uh, torquing device. Because you don't want to make, you know, your screws a little bit too loose. You don't want to make them too tight. You want to make them just right. Okay, so I'm going to install the other two ground bars. And again, we're going to hear that, that torquing screwdriver click in a little bit. There we go. It just clicked. Okay, there we go. All right, now we're going to install the, uh, the next one. And remember to use force because now you are now threading 
that screw into the sheet metal at the same time. Okay, we just had our, we just heard our click there from the torquing screwdriver. Okay, and now we're good. So now we've got our, our three ground bars in here and we're going to get ready for the next step. Now we're going to do something that I'm sure you've done thousands and thousands of times before. We're going to be installing our Romex connector and I'm going to bring in a branch circuit into the circuit breaker panel and I'm going to show you how I land the conductors and then we're going to pop in that circuit breaker and to show you how it's done on the Leviton load center. And here we go. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to do something I know, you know, you, you've done maybe thousands and thousands of times, more times than you can count. Um, you know, the way that I, I'm going to strip the sheathing, I'm actually going to, you know, pull them apart from here. But, you know, what some electricians do, they take a knife and they cut it here right in the middle. But what I've seen is that sometimes the knife slips and it actually slides into, you know, one of the, uh, the conductors, either the hot or the grounded conductor. You know, by doing it this way, I know that I'm never going to have a problem. I just give it a little bit of a twist. And I just pull them apart like that. I grab all my conductors. And I strip it back. We have to leave at least a quarter inch inside the panel. I like to leave a little bit more because I, I want to see the color of that cable. And I know in this case you know it's a 20 amp conductor. I'm gonna pull on it. Okay, so you know we I installed a ground bar down here. And the reason that I did that, I don't want these ground wires flying all over you know the circuit breaker panel. I'm just gonna land it here and make it nice and neat and tight. And I'm gonna start this one here. Um, I'm going to start this one here in the middle. I'm going to bend it over to where I think I'm going to want it to be. Over here. Okay, we have our nice click there from our torquing screwdriver. <clears throat> now what I do here is, you know, I have a little piece of the sheathing and I wrote a number on here, number 41. I wrote it on uh, both sides of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to slide this over my conductors. And the reason I do that in case in the future you know, if anybody's ever working on this panel, you know, I have a little number on there and we're going to have our directory and that's going to tell us, you know, what circuit that is in case, again, anyone's doing any work on this in the future. And if you look really close over here, you can see there's a little N in there that stands for neutral. And if you can see the color on this screw versus this one, this here, this neutral is silver and the hot terminal is brass colored. All right. So, you know, our white conductor is going to go on our silver screw and our black conductor is going to go on our brass screw.
And again, you know, you really good idea to use wire strippers. I've seen electricians use the linesman's, and it's not the right way to do it. You know, the wire strippers are specifically designed so that they don't cut in to the wire that eventually could uh, damage that wire and make it break. Okay, so we've just landed our branch circuit uh, here in the panel. And we can see that, you know, everything's nice and neat and tight to where it needs to be. Okay, so let's pop in the Leviton circuit breaker. Let's see how easy or hard that is. Okay, wow, that was, that was actually pretty easy. Okay, so as you can see, you know, the, um, the electricians were able to do the rough in and they were able to land the conductors at the same time and again it's a really nice idea to put a little you know label on it i've seen electricians actually write out what the the branch circuit is for and depending on their penmanship and depending on how good their marker was sometimes you couldn't even read it i write a little number here and in this leviton load center each of these is actually numbered so i numbered this to this one so again in the future if anyone ever pulls this out to work on it they can see that that's branch circuit number 41 and to pop that back in there okay so that's just how easy it is and we can see our ground bar here how nice and neat that is down here and the same thing will happen when we install the branch circuits on the top all right so before you know we actually close this up for tonight i'm going to do a continuity test and i'm also going to show you the unique bonding jumper that comes with the leviton load center and we all know if we see that green screw inside the circuit brake uh, panel that it's actually bonding the neutral to the ground they're bonded together but in this case you know it's a little different but uh, it's the same okay so what i'm going to do first uh, and I always do this on all of my panels that I install. I'm going to start off at my ground bar here. And I'm going to go ahead and touch, you know, the other ground bar. And I see that we are electrically connected. I'm going to go to the other one. And I see that we are electrically connected. And I'm going to go to the bottom one now. And we're electrically connected. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from... The ground bar here to the neutral bar and let's see what happens nothing i am not electrically connected here and that would be the case if this was a sub panel we're not allowed to bond the neutral to the ground if this is a sub panel but if this is the first panel the first point of disconnect we have to have our bonding jumper in there and that's what it is uh, that is our bonding jumper for the Leviton. So where this goes, it actually goes here. So we have to remove this. Green screw. We'll put it over here. And I'm not going to tighten this all the way. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. Now we're going to see if the ground and the neutral are electrically connected. So here I have uh, one on the ground and then one on the neutral. And we can see here that we are electrically connected. So when doing the Leviton panel, you know, that is your bonding jumper. So again, if that is your, um, your first point of disconnect, coming into the house you'll need that but if it's a sub panel then no you don't need that you want to make sure that that is separated because we can have something called objectionable current that ground wire is there for safety so if there's ever a fault to the case where you know let's say 
you know, one of the hot conductors is, is touching that case. We want that breaker to trip. And how is that going to happen? Because the grounds are connected to the case, and if we should have a fault, what's going to happen is that fault will travel through the case. It's going to travel to the ground bar, and then that's going to eventually find its way back to that first point of disconnect where we have the ground and the neutral bonded together. And that's going to allow that circuit breaker to trip. And that's called an effective ground fault current path. And again, the only place that we can bond the neutral and the ground is at that first point of disconnect. Now, if this was set up as the first point of disconnect, as the primary panel, we would have had our bonding jumper in here, and that would have created the path to trip the breaker. Again, it's called an effective ground fault current path. I don't care whatever you do as an electrician, the most important thing is we have to make sure that the installation is safe. Number one, I don't care what else you do, it's got to be safe and that, that breaker better trip. The other thing that we have to also know as electricians uh, is a topic called objectionable current. And that's when you know, if, if we have our first point of disconnect here, where the neutral and the ground are bonded together, nowhere else in the electrical circuit, throughout the house or any sub-panel, any electrical box, any receptacle, any switch, can the, the ground and the neutral be bonded there. Because what's going to happen, as the current's going back on the white wire, now it's also going to come back on the ground. And now we don't have what's called the canceling effect of the magnetics of the currents, uh, you know, from the hot and the white. Basically, they cancel each other. And that actually is part of the theory of how a GFCI works by the canceling effect. So again, if you open up a, a sub-panel or you open up a receptacle, if you see that, that ground and neutral bonded there together, um, that's a bad thing. You need to disconnect them because, again, the only place where that can be bonded is in the first point of disconnect. Again, if this was the primary panel, we'd have our bonding jumper, and that'd be fine. But this is being demonstrated as a sub-panel. So outside the building, there would be a disconnect, and that's where we bond the neutral and the ground together. Very important. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to pop in some circuit breakers. And again, remember that in the Leviton, we actually land the conductors right on the terminals here. So if you could just imagine that there's other conductors landed here, and now you send out your journeyman out to the job site to install the breakers. So let's see how long it takes to install uh, 10 single pole breakers plus one uh, two pole breaker, and here we go. And again, as I'm doing this, I'm going to be looking at the colors of the conductors of the little tab that I put there so that I know if this is a 15 or a 20 amp circuit. Okay, now here's our two-pole circuit breaker. Okay, um, is a real time saver, you know, as far as this aspect is concerned, that you could make sure that, you know, at the time of the roughing, the conductors are landed. And the number one problem that I've seen in the field is that people don't, you know, sometimes label, you know, all of those branch circuits hanging down on the floor. I think it's just a lot nicer, land them, on the roughing and then mark them and then when it comes time to power up the house you pop in the breakers turn everything on make sure that everything's good I, I see this as a real time saver out there in the field in the real world
So as you can see, we've installed the cover to the, the circuit breaker panel. And you might be asking yourself why you can still see, you know, the inside where we can see the circuit breaker over here. Well, this is an optional cover that Leviton sells, you know, with the, the clear plastic. And, you know, the nice thing about this, you know, for the homeowner, you know, they could be passing by, you know, their uh, circuit breaker panel. And uh, they could notice that maybe one of the breakers has tripped, you know, without even having to open up the circuit breaker panel. I kind of like this, you know, it's, it's really pretty. Uh, you just have to be careful that the electrician installing it, uh, make sure they clean their hands because you don't want to have all kinds of dirty fingerprints on this. But I, I think it looks really cool. The other thing here, and Leviton is actually making a change from what I understand, they're actually going to have this top part is solid. And what that's going to do, it's going to allow to put the directory up here. So, you know, that's actually a requirement of the National Electrical Code. That directory needs to be in or on that circuit breaker panel. Also, they do have another option here. If you want to, you know, leave it like that and not have the directory over here. They do have a strip of paper that gets attached to the middle and that's where you could write down all of the circuits but uh, you know make sure you have good penmanship because you don't want to have your electrician who's let's say has a pen or a sharpie that's real dull and uh, you know make a mess of this this is a really elegant looking panel I think it would look nicer you know if you got the one that had the solid piece over here so when you close the door you know you don't have to see the main breaker but then you can see all of your breakers here and you can see you know which one has tripped and uh, I think it, it's a nice little addition. So that's the, uh, the summary of the Leviton Load Center. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we certainly had a lot of fun looking at this and finding out about all the, the new things that they came out with their new Load Center. To get your free weekly electrical video or article, please go to our website, electricaltime.com, and click on subscribe, and also please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, please consider buying the electrical books, tools, and equipment from the links on our website. We very much appreciate it.